This meeting of the Star Wars Board of Aldermen will now come to order. Please rise for the singing of the Pledge of Allegiance to be followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. have before you a copy of the modified written agenda and I have numerous changes or proposed revisions before I open the floor to further proposed revisions. Uh, first of all, uh, each of the organizations that we're going to be making uh, public appearances with respect to community events uh, have further work that they need to do with their insurance contractor. So each of those public appearances uh, starting with uh, item 7A uh, and their corresponding board item should be pulled. Let, let's just do those in order. Uh, any objection to removing item 7A and 10A which is the board business item from the agenda? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. Any objection to removing item 7B? Oh excuse me, that, that, that one stays. Uh, Item 7C, uh, public appearance for Bulldog Bash, and item 10B from the consent agenda. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. That matter stays on the agenda, so the two remaining public appearances you will have is one by Dr. Roy Ruby on behalf of the Boys and Girls Club, and one by John <coughs> Hargraves on behalf of the Brownfields uh, a Grant. Uh, application process. Um, I have a few clerical changes that need to be made to items that are currently on consent on the board agenda. Uh, item 10B in the contract that that item references there are two terms uh, one refers to the contract term as a one-year term. One refers to it as a three-year term. That contract should be for a three-year term. Uh, so if that item remains on consent, it should remain on consent subject to all terms of the contract uh, referenced in the contract being for three years. Item 10F. Uh, if that matter remains on the consent agenda, it should also note the two mills that the central business district pays as part of a special assessment. Right now, only the 20 general mills of city taxes are referenced. There is a long-standing two additional mills that the central business district pays as a special assessment uh, and, and that would be part of the millage adoption for next year too. All right, is there any objection to the, 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 the first proposed revision to item 10D, making sure that uh, all uh, uh, references to the term of the contract for three years, any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. That change has been made. Is there any objection to reference being made or to the adoption of the two mills for the central business district being a, a part of the adoption of the millage rate in item 10F? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? All right, seeing none, the final clerical change I've got is the <coughs> school millage rate should be 62.77, which is the identical millage rate that the schools had for last year. That was an addition error uh, that has been corrected. Any objection to changing uh, the uh, school millage rate uh, set for the consent agenda to 62.77? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? All right, seeing none. I'll now open the floor for proposed revisions from the members of the board. Any proposed revisions? All of them did. 
Under board business item I to consent. All right, proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place I, uh, item 10 I, a consideration of the approval of a franchise agreement with KDL Windstream for the use of city rights of way as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, is that your proposed revision? It is. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Do we have any further proposed revisions? Alderman Dumas. Under personnel, item one's consent. All right, Alderman Dumas has proposed moving item I-1 on page six, the approval of the hire of Ashley Hanna, Derek T. Nelson, and Matthew T. Davis to fill positions of police officer as presented to the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, that's your proposed revision? It is. Any objection? Any object? Just, more than objects, I got a question for Chief. In here. Will you still be working on the other two additional hires that were vacated due to the court? As of October 1st, we have two additional officers that will be added to the force of extra receiving short and spotted exclusion brand. Are those the two? Those are the two that were the motorcycle patrol? Correct. Okay. Okay. I've got no objection. Any objection? Any objection to Alderman Dumas's proposed revision? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been moved to the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, you have further proposed revisions? Under personnel item two to consent. All right. The proposed revision is to place the approval of the hire of Frank Rogers III and Rodriguez Hinton to fill vacant positions of labor and sanitation and environmental <coughs> services department as presented to the consent agenda. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, you have further proposed revisions? Under personnel item three to consent. All right. Alderman Dumas's proposed revision is to move item I3 on page six, the approval to hire William Brooks and Jonathan Upchurch to fill the vacant positions of apprentice linemen as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, that's your proposed revision? It is. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? <coughs> Saying none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman <coughs> Dumas, do you have further proposed revisions? I have no further revisions. Are there any further? Alderman Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the recognition. Uh, Mr. Boyd, under personnel um, I number four, uh, at the last board meeting, we uh, discussed uh, the request for that to be a lateral transfer. Am I correct that this does not involve a lateral transfer? Mr. Mayor, we'll put item number uh, I-4 on the uh, consent agenda, please. Proposed revision from Alderman Perkins is to place item I-4, the approval to transfer Gary Scott Rivers to the vacant position of warehouse manager in the electric department as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Perkins, is that your proposed revision? It is. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Perkins? Uh, Mr. Fire Chief, uh, as on the item uh, Roman number G1 and 2, that, those matters really caught my eye because we're, I'm looking at a 2011 Crown Victoria and a 2011 uh, three-four ton pickup truck, and I know we're trying to staff that new fire station, so can you give us some explanation on why this is so urgent and necessitous? Yes, Alan Burke, that's actually to replace a, uh, uh, a vehicle that the firemen used to run back and forth from Jackson other is to replace the uh, vehicle uh, that the battalion chiefs respond in on whatever call. Both vehicles, the one, uh, the Crown vehicle is 18 years old, it's just simply has its useful life. And the uh, pickup that I need to replace is uh, nine years old, but it's just a common truck that we buy off a lot and we make it into an emergency response. So I take it that you're going to pass your vehicle down. Uh, the land uh, yes. for the 18 year old and you'll keep the 2011 yes. and then this uh, other vehicle is just one that's um, just an urgent situation where we've got to have this to get around in. But yes, we need to replace it to where we can roll the other one offline. Gotcha. Um, we'll keep them to consent, Mr. Mayor. Any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions? Seeing none, a motion to approve the agenda is revised. It's in order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Corey to approve of the agenda as revised. Do I hear second? Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. 
you have before you the revised consent agenda for your approval. Is there any objection to the consent agenda as revised? Any objection to the consent agenda as revised? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, the consent agenda as revised has been approved. Now before you, you have the consideration of the minutes from July 19, 2011. Discussion. Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to approve of the minutes from the recess meeting of the Board of Aldermen held on July 19, 2011, as presented. Alderman Dimmons, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the mayor? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passed. You have before you the August 2, 2011 minutes. Discussion. Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to approve of the minutes from the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen on August 2nd, 2011. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. That will carry us to comments by the Mayor and Board. And I have a few uh, tonight. Uh, got some uh, good things to recognize. Uh, first, uh, one that was not on the agenda, uh, but you may have seen it in the paper today. Uh, this city, the city of Starkville, was just recognized as one of 151 uh, cities in the United States of America to receive the Playful Cities USA uh, distinction. Uh, this is something we should all be quite proud of. Uh, I want to uh, commend Matthew Rye and uh, Heather Carson, who, who's not here tonight, uh, a, a volunteer in the community who, uh, uh, along with Matthew, helped steer the effort for us to complete a su successful application to this program. There were four other cities in Mississippi that received, received this distinction, uh, so it sets us apart uh, quite a bit from some of our peers in terms of promoting uh, quality uh, play spaces in the city of Starkville. Uh, and I should also note uh, that this community as a whole uh, deserves a great deal of credit because it is uh, in no small part because of the advances we've made since the early 1990s in improving uh, our park system in this city that we were uh, able to gain this distinction. So everybody deserves a big pat on the back tonight. I would uh, like to uh, announce that uh, next Tuesday, from 5 to 7 o'clock, uh, we're, we're going to have an open house event uh, here in City Hall uh, where citizens will be invited to come in and uh, get all the information uh, that they'll need heading into the September 27th uh, referendum on bonds for a new police station. Uh, that event will consist of an opportunity to take tours of the current police station uh, to familiarize yourself with the current state of things. And then we'll set up the uh, courtroom fair style uh, where we'll have different booths that citizens can come into and, and ask questions uh, and also get information uh, so you'll know everything you would need to know in order to make an informed choice uh, on, on September 27th. Uh, we will have a table set up for elected officials, so I would encourage uh, all aldermen, if you are available, please be here from, from 5 to 7. Uh, the event will be come and go, uh, so Alderman, if you have something for a part of the time, it's quite all right if you'd like to come uh, for you know a, a, a piece of, of that time. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of national uh, recognitions uh, that I have the pleasure of making here tonight. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, recognize Sergeant Sean Work. Uh, recently, he was honored as the only law enforcement officer in the state of Mississippi, uh, among five honorees in the nation, recognized at the National Conference on the uh, Conference for the Office of Juvenile Justice Delinquency in Orlando, Florida. The, all of the other honorees uh, uh, were alcohol beverage control officers. Uh, so he was the only honoree, and might understand, in the nation uh, that was a law enforcement officer to receive this distinction. Please join me in congratulating Sergeant Ward.
Next, I'd like to recognize Sergeant Chad Garnett, who was recently selected on July 14, 2011, among 300 participants as the top Mississippi liaison officer for the state of Mississippi. Please join me in congratulating Sergeant Garnett. It is now my pleasure to introduce the three newest members of the City of Starkville workforce. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Cassandra Young. Cassandra is our newest Deputy Court Clerk. It is my pleasure to introduce Cassandra S. Young as the newest Deputy Court Clerk for Municipal Court. Cassandra is originally from Starkville and attended B.L. Moore High School in Crawford, Mississippi. She is a graduate of East Mississippi Community College with an associate's degree in special education. Previously, Cassandra worked at the Creative Learning Center as a child care attendant. Cassandra and her parents, Walter and Lena Young, attend Austin Church of, Holy, uh, Church of Christ Holiness. During her spare time, Cassandra enjoys traveling, reading, singing, decorating, and spending time with her dog, a Jack Russell Terrier named Maxie. Please join me in welcoming Cassandra. It is now my pleasure to introduce William Bell, our newest driver in the Sanitation and Environmental Services Department. <coughs> and it is my pleasure to welcome William Bell as our newest driver for the Sanitation and Environmental Services Department. William is, a, is from Starkville and attended B.L. Moore High School in Crawford, Mississippi. He is a graduate of West Virginia State University, where he received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Education and Health Sciences. Before joining the city of Starkville, William worked at West Jackson Community Development Corporation. He, is also a sub he was also a substitute teacher and an assistant football coach at Athens High School in Ohio. William is the proud parent of three children. He and his family attend Greater Ebenezer Baptist Church. When William isn't busy with work, he enjoys fishing, hunting, and watching football. Please join me in welcoming William. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Benjamin Burkett. And Benjamin Burkett is the new meter technician for the Starkville Electric Department. He is originally from Starkville and a graduate of Starkville High School. He attended Mississippi State University where he majored in English education. Benjamin previously worked for a regional cable television provider and an as an installation technician. Benjamin enjoys yard work and cooking in his spare time. He also enjoys spending time with his family and his girlfriend Donna and playing with his cat Tiger. Please join me in welcoming Benjamin. And that concludes my comments for this evening. Do we have any? Oh. We have one scheduled comment from the members of the board, and that is the presentation of our Employee of the Month from Alderman Sister. Yes, it's my, my great privilege to um, make the presentation for Employee of the Month for September 2011. Um, Arthur Thompson is the Employee of the Month for September 2011. Arthur is a maintenance worker in the Water Department and has worked for the city since December 2002. He's a very dedicated and dependable employee, and his willingness to go that extra mile has proven to be invaluable. Arthur recently took over the maintenance of the warehouse and outside storage area for the department, and he's done an outstanding job of organizing and cleaning up that area. By doing this, Arthur has lowered the inventory on hand, and the standard parts are always available, keeping cost and emergency purchases to a minimum. Thank you. Arthur also took it upon himself to paint the warehouse and break room, making it look almost new. His actions have motivated other employees to keep these areas clean and orderly. 
Arthur is a pleasure to work with, and he's always willing to help out when a crew is shorthanded. He is a valuable asset to the Water Department and the City of Starkville, and he should be commended for the extra effort he gives every day. The City of Starkville is proud to recognize Arthur Thompson as Employee of the Month for September 2011. We have any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments? Any further comments? Alderman Carp. I guess I'd like to use this opportunity. I get asked a lot around around town how I feel about the municipal complex, and uh, I guess I use this opportunity in the first of the meeting while everybody's still thinking about it. But um, you've got to realize that if you've never been up here to City Hall, and my eyes are open since being elected, and actually you need to tour the place, you need to go and, and come here on the 13th. And I guess I'm speaking more to the camera than anybody here, because if you're here, then you, you understand uh, the dilemma we're in. So I'm kind of I'm neutral on it either way. I, I think that you've got to realize for, and correct me if I'm wrong, but say for a $200,000 house, it's around $80 a year, a total year. So, uh, and, and if you've got a $100,000 house, you're looking at $35 a year. If you're over 65 or disabled, claiming a double homestead, it's $8 a year. So, you've got to realize um, that, you know, you're asking a lot, but you also, we need a police station. Um, we're behind. It, it, it has opened my eyes up here to the amount of, the lack of space that the police officers are, are operating with. And also, not, them, not just the police officers, but all the city hall employees. Uh, so you just got to realize that. I'm not going to say what my position is on that. I think I, I'm going to use my opportunity to stay neutral, but um, use the opportunity. The 13th is an excellent, thank you for setting that up, is an excellent night to come up here. Uh, take the opportunity, walk through the back rooms, walk through the, the spaces. If, are you going to let everybody tour? Yeah. It's going to be a purely open house? Yeah. We'll, okay. it, it, we'll tour the police station Okay. because that's what's at Good issue. So use that opportunity if you can come up here on September 13th and, and actually get a hands-on feel. Um, Talk to these elected officials, talk to the policemen, and uh, leave it at that. So, thank you. Any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments? Seeing none, we'll move to citizen comments. Any citizen wishing to make comments this evening may do so by coming forward, uh, introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Good evening to the men. Board, my name is Adam Tunnel Ward Seth. I uh, want to recognize Vice Mayor Sistrump and Alderman Vaughn. Thank you, Good evening, Mr. Strong. The citizens and the taxpayers um, have a few concerns. The citizens and taxpayers of uh, Carver Drive, uh, uh, they would like to live in Ward 1, Ward 2, Ward 3, 4, and 5 to let them get the feel <laughs> of a better living. Also, uh, school board, uh, we hope that a fight don't have to break out before we find something out of what the school board is doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Do we have any further citizens' comments? Any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Seeing none, we'll move to public appearances. <coughs> And uh, our slate of public appearances has been trimmed significantly. Uh, Dr. Ruby, you will be our first public appearance this evening, making a presentation on behalf of the Boys and Girls Club. And Dr. Ruby, you'll have a maximum of 10 minutes uh, to make your presentation. And I ask that you uh, sit for a little while afterwards and uh, hear questions and comments from the members of the board. I had a, a pad of 45 minute address. I <laughs> down. Thank you very much. First thing I want to do is thank the board and the 
mayor for previous support of the Boys and Girls Club and certainly solicit your continued support. Let me tell you a little bit about the Boys and Girls Club. It's a significant organization nationally. It was has been of service to the uh, youth of America since 1860 when the first boys club was founded in Hartford, Connecticut. Now there are 4,300 clubs across this country serving 4.5 million youth. Nationally, in, in 1906, it was chartered as the Boys Club of America. In 1990, the name was changed to the Boys and Girls Club to recognize the expanded mission. It uh, has been ranked by Forbes Magazine, Newsweek, and U.S. News and World Report as one of the top charitable organizations in the country based on cost-effective use of donor dollars. But let me be very clear that we have to raise locally all of our dollars. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club is an after-school and summer program for youth that provides a safe, positive environment. But beyond that, they provide supportive relationships, learning activities, uh, character building activities and fun with a purpose and it is provided for those youth who need it, who need it the most. The, the participants are not there because their parents are out at the country club, you understand. Yes, we have certain goals, certain outcomes that we hope uh, we uh, convey to the, uh, to, the, to the young participants. First thing is academic success. We try to avoid dropouts by constantly preaching the value of education, but beyond preaching that, we provide tutoring, help with homework during the, uh, <coughs> during the school year. The goal is that all participants would eventually be high school graduates, either ready for college, trade school, military, or employment, depending on their circumstances. Good character, the Boys and Girls Club teaches honesty, concern for others, value of work, truthfulness, and basically the golden rule in terms of personal relationships. Good citizens, the Boys and Girls Club teaches good citizenship that, that uh, hopefully all will become engaged citizens that vote, that obey the law, that do their civic duty, and are loyal to, to the United States. In addition to that, they uh, uh, to hope they will adopt a healthy lifestyle, in starting with a healthy diet, the value of exercise, the dangers of alcohol, drugs, and smoking, abstinence until marriage, and uh, healthy choices in all areas of life. Currently, we have in the Starkville, uh, in Ro the one in Starkville was started in 1995, and it came from city government, something called, called the Youth Council, as I understand it, was the way it started, and it's been in Starkville since 1995. Currently, the Starkville Club, we have about a hundred, Usually have 120. It's down a li little bit this fall, but in the summer we had 120. We have six staff members. The work of the Boys and Girls Club is a noble effort to influence young people to lead successful, productive, and happy lives through good choices based on good information, advice, training, and support. And again, I say we thank most sincerely this, the Board of Aldermen and the Mayor for your previous support and hope you will continue to do that. Do we have any questions or comments from the members of the board? Alderman Sistro. I, I need to make a couple of comments. Um, first, I'd like to say that it is indeed a worthy organization. I actually have people who live in my ward who have moved to that ward specifically so that they could be near the place where the Boys and Girls Good. Clubs meet and have their after-school program. So you, you, you very much make a difference in individuals' lives. Um, I, I would also like to take this opportunity to um, Note that when we passed our budget this year, it was important very much for us to keep our um, tax rate flat from uh, fiscal year 11 to fiscal year 12. And one of the things that's occurred because of that is uh, we have reduced the monies that are allocated for outside contributions. We have not decided how those are going to be allocated yet. The, I expect that the board will do that shortly and will certainly um, keep the Boys and Girls Clubs in mind. Another thing is that there are only certain things that we can make outside contributions for. Um, and if we have any question about whether a contribution to the Boys and Girls Club fit within those parameters, we will be in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me assure you that it's a it's a struggle funding the Boys and Girls Club in Starville. It, it's not it hadn't been here long enough, and you know, does it have the kind of support that uh, the boy that the uh, Boy Scouts and those it's not as well known, and so it's a struggle to uh, so to to fund it. 
but we, we, we will continue to do that, and, and, and we thank you for your support. Anything you can do to help, we would appreciate it. Do we have any further questions or comments from members of the board? Alderman Park. Under, under the income, are, are, we under, are we under donations or grants? Do you, do you know which line Oh, I we have? get some grants, and we, but uh, well, there are certain grants that the Boys and Girls Club get, and I don't know the percentage of that for the total budget, but probably the greater percentage would be would be uh, would be donations. The United Way, right. the but county government, city government. What, 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 which, I guess, which what category do we fall under? Like the, the money we've given the boys club. You would be a donation, a donation. I believe, okay. as opposed to a grant. To, okay. Good deal. Do we have any further questions or comments from the members of the committee? Any Alderman Carr? I missed the meeting with the budget adoption. So, what kind of money are we talking about here? For the Boys and Girls Club. Previously, yes, ma'am. Last year's budgeted. Um, five thousand dollars. What has it been reduced to? We've not we've not Nine said minutes. how we're going to distribute those dollars yet. But the, a general idea would be, last year was seventy. Total, and this year is less than fifteen. Any further questions or comments <coughs> from the members of the board? Any further questions or comments? Any further questions or comments? Seeing that, thank you, Dr. Rivers. Thank you all very much. Appreciate what you've done. Our next public appearance is from John Hargraves. And John is here to, I believe, lead a public discussion on uh, our uh, potential Brownfields assessment grants. Uh, and John's going to tell us what exactly that is and how it might benefit this community and see if we have any questions about it. My, my name is John Hargraves. I'm with uh, PM Environmental. Um, we have offices throughout the Midwest and the Southeastern uh, U.S. And uh, I am just going to briefly talk some of the high points about what this grant is and what it could mean for the city of Starkville and, and the process. And then you can you can ask me questions if you like. Basically, this uh, this brownfield program started uh, by the EPA in 2000 uh, with pilot programs, and they've been funding grants. Uh, through that program ever since. Um, and uh, there are several different kinds of grants, but the one that we're talking about with the, uh, the city of Starkville is, a, is, is called a site assessment grant. So that's the one that I'm actually going to discuss very briefly today. Um, really, this, this grant is intended uh, to provide municipalities um, with uh, assistance to encourage uh, redevelopment of a brownfield site. And if you don't know what a brownfield site is, generally it's a site that um, is a piece of property that is either not utilized at all or is underutilized because of either some sort of environmental impact or the important part of this is the perception of environmental impact. So even if, you th it, if you've had folks that have walked away from a property that are interested in it because they think it's got contamination, then that's basically what a brownfield is. And so this grant will help you assess these brownfield sites. Um, typically what it does is it helps with uh, the various environmental site assessments that have to be done as part of a property transaction, um, different other kinds of, of inspections for maybe asbestos lead based paint, um, doing uh, some kind of cleanup planning potentially if it's, if it's there and there's a few other items that can, it can be done as well. Um, I do want to point out that this grant is very, very competitive. Um, last year about one in five applications for the assessment grant were funded uh, by the EPA. Bless you. So um, it, is, it is a very, very competitive application process that we have to go through. Um, we as a company have been writing these applications for municipalities for about six years. Um, and uh, we've actually been successful in getting money for various municipalities throughout the Southeast and the Midwest pretty much every year. So, uh, uh, so we do have some experience in being able to prepare these. Uh, what we're looking at for the city is, a, is would be called a community-wide assessment grant. So essentially, this would mean uh, any site within the city limits of Starkville would be eligible for this. And we can redefine those boundaries later. We had talked about some other partners potentially, but uh, for now we'll just say it would be just for the city of Starkville. Um, so any site that may potentially have contamination um, that doesn't have really a liable party um, 
would be eligible for this. There's a process that the EPA goes through with that. Um, so keep in mind again, and I'll, I'm going to stress this, is that it's not always for sites that we where we know that there's contamination that's keeping redevelopment from happening. Sometimes it's just a perception something's there. And if you can work through that perception and find that there is nothing there that's of an Im uh, that has any kind of impact, then it may free up that property for some kind of redevelopment. Uh, the kind of money we're talking about is four hundred thousand uh, dollars. Two hundred thousand would be strictly for assessing sites that may have had petroleum, whether that's a gas station, whether that's other kinds of petroleum, and the other two hundred thousand would be for uh, would be classified as hazardous substances. Something like a dry cleaner, for instance, would be would fall under that. Um, the municipality decides how they want to spend the money, but it has to. The, each site has to be um, has to meet the evaluation of the EPA. There's there again. We all got process. It's a process that you have to go through. Um, the grant is for a three-year period, so once it's awarded, you have three years to to, to spend that money. Um, so sometimes we have seen a lot of success stories with uh, with this kind of this with this kind of application when it's been funded, um, and uh, it's really a good tool for a municipality to use to try to jumpstart some development um, or part of their master plan that they may have. Uh, in place um, that uh, that just hasn't been able to get jump started. So um, the uh, deadline for the application has not been set yet. Uh, they're a little bit slow this year. They typically have already should have already been set. And it's typically mid October because it hasn't been set yet. I would suspect it's going to be probably into November, but we won't know for sure until the uh, until the, uh, uh, the the official announcement comes up. So uh, the, the only other thing I'll say is just be persistent about this application. If for some reason it's not funded this time, try it again. Because it, sometimes it takes communities two and three times in order uh, to go through this application and get it funded. Um, my role with this is our, our company is doing this as an in-kind service to the city. So this is, this is something that we, uh, we do to help communities, uh, especially small communities, uh, we we always kind of complain that there's not enough of these grants around this part of the part of the country. So our companies decided to kind of put their money where their mouth is to some degree and actually assist communities with this. So that's a quick overview of what it is. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Any questions? Alderman Dibble. I want to thank John for being here. I guess just to offer a little oversight on this whole process. Um, back in 2004, I believe it was. Uh, OCEDA and the partnership and others went through a process very similar to this to look at the um, the research park site as, as one example of what this is going through and and ultimately we want to build on that as you said and do other things but um, I really appreciate the work that you've done and, and will do on this and uh, hopefully bring it to fruition however best possible. Alderman Carr. That's what I was looking into my question. First time I'm hearing this, is there any specific site that you're interested in evaluating, or is this just a... It's, well, since it's community-wide, um, it can be any site within the city limits. Uh, there has been discussions of some, some particular sites, um, but uh, uh, the application itself really revolves more around a master plan or the, the visioning or something of, of the city. Um, but if there are sites that... Uh, that you know of that could fit into this uh, part of this application process is to uh, try to set up some kind of an inventory. So if there's sites that you know of, uh, please let us know and we can we can add that to the inventory. And the, the state has identified some spots already, haven't they? Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Um, and, and there is a state database that, that has been uh, uh, been, been looked at and we already have a kind of a basic inventory from that. Um, <clears throat> what we have found though is sometimes, uh, and I guess maybe it's a good or bad thing, the state doesn't always know. Right. So uh, there are, and that, that's where it's important for uh, local citizens to come to come front because they may know of a property that has been sitting empty for so long everybody's forgotten what it is and those are very those can be very good sites to redevelop especially if they're in a location that that could lend itself to doing something good any further questions or comments from the members of the board 
Any further questions or comments? Now, John, if I understand uh, how the application process works, it works. It strongly encourages feedback from the public generally. Uh, that's correct. So I'm going to do something that's a, a little unconventional with the public appearances. I, I'm going to open the floor uh, to the public for questions or comments on, on John's presentation. Are there any questions or comments from the members of the public? Any questions or comments? questions or comments. All right, seeing none. Thank you, John. All right, that will conclude our public appearances, and that's going to carry us all to all the way to our loan item of board business that was not placed on the consent agenda, and that is a report from the city clerk on the current status of revenues and expenditures for fiscal year 2011. Almost over. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the report from my the city accountant was well, our revenues projection for the fiscal year 2011 were budgeted at sixteen million twenty-three thousand dollars. We are at approximately ninety percent there, with uh, some funds over budget and some were under. It's projected that we are in the year with a hundred thousand dollars over budget now this is largely due to the city and county's aggressive tax collections on uh, delinquent and uh, prior property personal property taxes so revenues if if projections go well we will be a hundred thousand over there our expenses for the fiscal year 2000 are trending to about two hundred thousand below budget and we, we looked through our numbers and we saw where personnel in the fire department projections were above actual. Uh, so we have uh, funds there. And the fact that uh, we've asked department heads in this time of year, we asked department heads to kind of hold tight on, on spending uh, unless it was absolutely necessary. And the department heads have done uh, very well with, with uh, holding their budgets. Uh, to within uh, a reasonable um, spending pattern these last months. So with that, we're looking at about $300,000 that we are, look, are saying we will recoup, hopefully. Say are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. Two things, Mr. Mayor, may be recognized. You may. Uh, um, City Clerk, uh, you are keeping a, a very watchful eye on the claims docket, right? That's correct. But there are a lot of things that you know that you know that can be approved through the claims that are coming to the board. Now you said there are about three hundred thousand dollars that we recoup. Make that a little bit clearer. What, what, do you, what, well, what are you saying? Well, uh, our projections were that we were the revenues would be sixteen million, and we're uh, projecting now that we're at the end of the year. We see where funds coming in, revenues coming in, will be approximately a hundred thousand above what we project. Right, so it's an extra hundred thousand dollars for, for the taxpayers' uh, bank account. Right, and, and the, the expenses are two hundred thousand dollars less than what was projected. That's correct. So we watch our spending and don't just act like we just got a lot of money to spend. Then that's an extra three hundred thousand dollars. That's correct. So um, I, I want to encourage you just to keep a very watchful eye on the claims docket, and certainly if you see anything unusual, I'd like for you to point it out to. Um, to, to the board uh, and the mayor, uh, as well as Ms. Spruill. So um, I, I think that's be commendable. I don't think we've gotten that kind of report where we've uh, come up with some extra revenue at the end of, of uh, or as we approach the end of a fiscal year and, and the expenses is less than what uh, was um, was projected because like, that is real good because we, the city of Stark, will have uh, spent a lot of money this year on personnel. So uh, that means some areas have really done well in, in cutting back. So that's that's a good report. Any further questions? Alderman Sister? I, I too appreciate uh, re the report. And one of the reasons that I was particularly interested in seeing where we were projected to end the end of the year was because as we were going through our budget process, we were thinking that there would be enough of um, an excess of revenues over expenditures to help fund some capital projects that we didn't fund through the budget process. So I'm glad to hear that um, 
these these dollars will be available for for continuing to fund capital projects and and whatever else the board chooses, but particularly capital projects. Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? Any further questions or comments? Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, the next order of business <coughs> is the request for approval of the fire department claims document. Mayor, will excuse myself? We'll give Alderman Carver a moment to exit the room. Discussion. Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Corey to approve of the City of Starkville Fire Department's claim, Fire Department claims docket as of September 1st, 2011. Alderman Corey, such a motion. Do a second. Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Newman. City discussion. Any discussion. Any discussion. Seek none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. We'll give Alderman Carver a moment to re enter the room. The next matter before you is the request for approval of the low quote for the Maple Street Drainage Improvement Project Phase 1 and authorization to enter into an agreement with said contractor. Mr. Kim. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor Board. Uh, included in your packet was a uh, uh, proposal uh, tabulation. We received three proposals for this project. Um, this was a project that was approved by the board as part of the 2011 capital improvement budget and um, the, the quotes came in a little higher than our budget however we hope that we can realize some um, some underruns and other projects to make up the difference in this and this is the phase one of Maple Drive which is improvements um, on top of the hill essentially uh, behind the Kroger um, modifications to the detention pond and the overflow uh, construction of overflow channel that will run westward towards Stark Road instead of um, toward the, the ditch that um, has a continuous flooding uh, that parallels Maple Drive. So the ultimate plan is to get more water out of that, uh, out of that ditch down there and uh, I think this will help. This is just one of, of several components um, this is definitely not going to solve all the problems, but it will definitely help. So, I'll be happy to have uh, take any questions. Questions or comments for Mr. Kemp? Any questions, or Alderman Carver? Um, you and I spoke and met, and we're the expert. But with this phase one, do you think and with that H and H survey that you sent and with this? I mean, I know some homes have been flooded with the rain two days ago. And the road by them myself and looked at it. Do you think this will even come close to alleviating the actual flooding of the homes, or is this going to be something that gets solved in phase two and three? Or? It's definitely a phased approach. Um, yeah. It's not one thing that you can do to, to solve the flooding down there, but um, we're awaiting the results back from the H and H, the final report, and um, of course, phase two would will have to deal with the channel itself, um, increasing the capacity of that channel. But like I said, we're, we're looking at all ways to reduce the amount of water that's flowing through that channel. And uh, right now, this uh, detention facility, the overflow uh, is directed directly toward that, that open channel downstream. And, and with this design, the overflow would, would then bypass that channel. So um, there's no way to estimate on the number of inches that you'll be able to bring the water flow down from, from now, or you just have to do this and then see where it where it gets us. No, it, it's going to reduce it. I don't. I don't know the percentage uh, yeah. right off the top of my head, but um, you know, it, it, it is going to help. Thank you for everything you've done out there. And um, I, again, I know it, the board and the mayor has has toured the, the the stretch of the ditch that's causing the problem and uh, something that we inherited. And I appreciate everything that you've done to help. We're looking forward to those results from both um, uh, Maple and Carver very soon on, on those H&H &H studies. Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? You may. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to move approval of this project. And, and a couple of things I want to say is I move approval of this project. Now, this project here is a very delinquent, long overdue and outstanding project. And the gentleman from Warren wants to know uh, about at what point will we be able to get the flooding done. I mean, we need to move this project expeditiously along. 
the people on Maple Street have been waiting um, uh, extremely long. They've been extremely patient. And, and I also want to add in this discussion uh, that you know I, and I want the, the mayor and the board to likewise, let's keep a watchful eye on the Carver Drive ditch. And let's do everything we can to facilitate the movement of these federal officials who, for some reason, found a way into our community to become involved in a ditch that has no historical or national significance or even any statewide significance. So we need to get these projects done. The people in Maple have come to this board over for years and years and years. And we need to, to start giving priority to these matters and let these taxpayers on Maple Drive, Carver, uh, as well as, as other sections of this town know that we uh, are going to give these projects priority. And if there's a study somewhere sitting on some uh, bureaucrat's desk, we need to stay on top of that. We have plenty of staff here on a day-to-day -day basis to, to stay uh, constantly on top of these projects to make sure that we as a board are kept constantly and readily informed on the um, on, on all developments and movements on these projects and you know this Maple Drive I mean I've been hearing about this project ever since I've been here in the College Drive you know, we know we need to bring these projects to a finality these people from Maple have come up here I'm not trying to take the general from one thunder but I have the experience and the knowledge to know about these projects and I'm not faulting Mr. Kemp here but since he is now the engineer and, and all the other relevant staff, let's work together, make all these projects a reality. Um, and the gentleman from Five, he's talked about some projects in his district, but let's move these things along. And I want to um, uh, get this project complete. Maybe we can get this done for the end of this term. I want to get the Carver Drive ditch project done and some others. And so that's what I'm concerned about. You know, we don't show enough interest collectively as a city to stay on top of these things. You know, we need to show interest in these projects just like we would our own business, our own home, our own residence. That's what we're uh, uh, charged with. I mean, that's our uh, duty and responsibility. So let's make sure it, it, that we approve this phase tonight and let's get back and get the next phase and, and our ultimate goal will be to eliminate this flooding and all these waters so these people can, can be able to breathe a breath of fresh air at this location. So. So let's support this, and I want you, the board to let's get the Carver Drive matter moving and, and all other relevant projects moving forward. So, Mr. Mayor, I, I ask for a unanimous a second on this motion and unanimous approval. Alderman Perkins has made a motion to approve of the low quote or lowest and best quote for the uh, Maple Street drainage improvement project phase one and authorization to enter into an agreement with Terry Stidham Construction, Mr. Kemp, yes, right. sir. With with Terry Stidham Construction as presented, Alderman Perkins, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? I've got a second and discussion. All right, motion has been seconded by Alderman Dumas. Alderman Perkins, would you like to speak on the merits? Uh, no, sir. Alderman Dumas, how many phases to this project? Well, the um, depending on what the H and H study comes back and. Uh, that's going to kind of determine um, how how many phases are. It, it depends on the magnitude of the of the recommendations from that report. So are we waiting on those recommendations and then get a broader plan? That that's more directed at the channel itself. This is upstream of the channel, trying to divert the water um, from from ever entering that channel. So we're diverting water from entering the channel. The H and H will then tell us what to do with the channel itself. Right. So we don't have a total cost. As soon as we get those recommendations back, uh, there will be multiple alternatives, mm -hmm. and we'll do a um, preliminary cost estimate for each, and uh, we'll be bringing those to the board as soon as we have that that study uh, finished. Do we have any idea when those H and H studies will be completed? I'm hoping um, we should be very close on on both of them, uh, but but I. I don't. I don't want to say the next meeting because I'm. I'm not sure. I talked to the engineer last week, and he said he was very close. <coughs> Further discussion. I, I have a question. Um, <laughs> this board, if if nothing else, has learned about uh, stormwater and how water flows through our community. It, we're not 
in, in an effort to solve a problem here, we're not going to have the unintended consequence of creating a problem um, as you divert that water toward Stark Road, are we? We're actually diverting it to another detention pond. Okay. Um, that's the pond that you can see as you drive down the, okay. the uh, road right behind Penny's. Okay. And so uh, that water, while diverted, will still be um, slowed down additionally before it reaches um, the downstream, uh, which basically uh, goes west under Stark Road and through Upper Crossing. And we have the capacity in those detention facilities yes. to and, and the manage that water. Yeah, I okay. believe so. Any further discussion? Alderman Carver. While we're on the subject, uh, you and I have spoken. There's a government agency has a, a retention pond. Have you addressed that issue with them and maybe the fact that why the pond isn't working? We have um, viewed and inspected their facility, and we have um, coordinated with the, the postmaster. Um, we've sent them recommendations on ways to <coughs> Better util that the pond could be better utilized and improved, and um, we've not heard a response back from that correspondence. But I'll be happy to follow up with them. Okay. Any further discussion? 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 Seeing none, all those in favor of Alderman Perkins' motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passed. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. The next matter on the agenda is the request for approval of the job description and approval to advertise to fill the position of staff accountant in the electric department. Mr. 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 Boyd. Alderman Burke. Yes, Mayor. I'm probably the only dissenting vote on this, but I, I just want to ask the Vice Mayor, maybe, you know, this this um, is being recommended be very brief here, being recommended for the electric department of the city of Starkville to have two accountants to run the department. And the thought that came to my mind, Vice Mayor, maybe you need to go there and help them run this department. I mean, I, I just can't see us having two accountants. We got one accountant, Miss Debbie Clark, will run the whole city. Now, I know that this position is, is budgeted, is already there, but the person has, has retired. You know, that goes back to um, um, spending taxpayers' money. You know, we got it, so I guess the, the mindset, you got to spend it. We got an account, to me, of course, I'm, it, it, it would seem that, you know, if, if uh, the schedule, the work schedule is structured properly, that she ought to be able, or he or she ought to be able to, to do the work of, of just one department. If we got one person, City Hall, can do the work for all these other departments, it's just hard to just fathom the fact that it takes two people, two accountants to run the elect department. And Vice Mayor, maybe at some point, I mean, you know, you're chairman of the budget committee. I like to, I like to get your honest opinion. I, I just can't believe, and I'm not no accountant. I'm just a lawyer. I mean, I got my law degree. I'm not. That's not my area of expertise. But it's just hard for me, just with any rational, alto, any reasonableness, to believe if you go there work from eight to five every day, got to take two accountants to run one department. That's a lot of money. I'm sure the account, the other account, I'm not uh, looking at any figures. But this one here is going to make thirty-two some thirty-two thousand plus dollars. The other one's going to probably make a bit of forty some thousand, not fifty some. So we spend a good seventy-five thousand dollars on just accounting, and that's I mean, that's ridiculous. We got one personnel officer running the whole city, got one police chief running the whole city, got one uh, technology director, one city planner, one chief administrative officer. Why would we get the hell? Two accountants to run the Starkville Electric Department. Come on, City of Starkville. If we have that kind of money, let's roll the rates back. We just approved on the consent agenda for the pass-through rates, which I've been tired of for years. But the, but I've been, I guess, uh, convinced some kind of way that we just got to do it for TVA. It's if they don't have the powers to do it. If we got that kind of money to hire these kind of people, the Electric Department. Let's roll the rates back. Let's give the money back to the taxpayers. Mr. Mayor, I'm done. And, and if I if I could just just briefly say that um, the the functions of the accountants and much much like with the legal profession you you'll have attorneys who specialize in family law in litigation in tax law 
um, accounting is, is, is much the same, where you can have very different functions. And I know that Starkville Electric um, does a lot more of uh, cost accounting and financial planning than we're <coughs> able to do with the staff that we have here at the City of Starkville. The uh, electric department also not only has to report to the city of Starkville, they also have to report to TVA. So there are there are some differences, and I understand um, I understand how it can appear that um, there there may be um, some some ability or, or some opportunity to um, reduce your your staff. But I, I do believe that both those positions are necessary over at Starkville Electric. I believe that the city clerk's office desperately needs a, a true financial analyst. I think that that's a job that would pay for itself, but I may be in the minority there. So. Ms. Mayor, just one question, um, if I may. Uh, Ms. Sistrong, just one, just for informational purposes, are you telling us that there's no way that uh, a counter, you know, of course, um, can, uh, just one accountant over there can just do all the work for the department? Are you saying that this, that person cannot do that work? I'm, I'm saying that there's a lot more involved than, than we probably realize in, in those jobs. And I do believe that, yes, there is a, a need for, for two positions over there. As, as I said, I think there's a need for a financial analyst position in the city clerk's office. I, I think it would be something that would pay for itself, um, pay for itself. Uh, Mr. Mayor, one last thing. Ms. Spruill, what I, what I would like to see, I like to see on one future agenda, I like to read stuff so I can, you know, lawyers like to be convinced. Uh, I know I do, but I like to see some information uh, as to uh, the, the, the necessity of the of the two accountants, you know. I mean, what does each one do on, on an eight-hour day? Why do we have to have two accountants? And, and, and no disrespect to the to the vice mayor, but you, could you get some information for one future, don't have to be for the next meeting, uh, sometime for the end of the year? And let us let me let uh, you can give it to the mayor and board and uh, just a report of why we need two accountants. What each county gonna be doing? I mean, what's different? What's specialized? What's unique? What this person doing? And and uh, and how this keep this person occupied from eight to eight to five uh, Monday through Friday. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Further discussion. No motion pending. Alderman Sistra. I move uh, approval of the job description and uh, advertisement. To fill the position of the staff accountant in the electric department. Alderman Sistrunk has made a motion to approve of the job description and approval to advertise to fill the position of staff accountant in the electric department as presented. Alderman Sistrunk, is that your motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Do I hear a second? Second. Alderman Cord. Alderman Sistrunk, would you like to speak on the mayor? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Alderman Carver. Mr. Kemp, in your opinion, is this something from a workload standpoint that, that one accountant can get it done or is it? Requirement of having to. I think this position is required. You know, one of the reasons we brought it before the board uh, was when Mark Anderson, you know, we had actually a two plan account and he retired. And then this actually has some staff support being able to carry out our function. Is there any way that one of uh, the accountant could take care of the electric department's business or is it impossible? Probably some compliance things that they do in addition to just the debits and credits of an accounting position. Further discussion. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Saying none. All those in favor of Alderman Sistrunk's motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. Hey. Uh, all right. I have all in favor uh, except Perkins and Perkins <coughs> casting the loan dissenting vote. Vote. Is that correct? Okay. So by measure of uh, by vote of six to one, this measure passes. The Next matter on the agenda is uh, potential closed session. 
You have several matters before you for your consideration, uh, potentially in executive session. A motion for closed session would be in order. Alderman Court. Mayor, I move we go to closed session to determine the need for executive session. Alderman Court has made a motion to move into a closed session to determine whether there is a need for an executive session. Alderman Court, is that your motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion been seconded by Alderman Carver. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor of Alderman Court's motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. We'll move into a closed session. And without objection, I'm going to move us into a quick recess while everybody can leave the room. Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. Quick recess. <laughs>